Hello everyone, I'm back. Apologies for the late video, I was just away for the last few days. So, as some of you know from the last video, Sunday was a busy day for me. I had my football match, then I had to go to a rehearsal, then I had to pick my daughter up, then we watched the the first half and most of the second half of the game finished because um, it was my dad's birthday and we went out for the meal and just managed to watch the rest of the game in the car and at the table, which was a bit cheeky. But, you know, managed to watch the rest of that on uh, the Sky Go app. Um, so pretty much saw the whole game um, in the end. And then Monday morning had to go straight off um, for a, a little break with my daughter and my girlfriend, uh, which is why I couldn't put a video up because where we were actually staying, turns out was completely off grid. Uh, there was no electricity about, um, so conserving battery on my phone was paramount. Was having to sneak into the car to get the uh, the charge back up on my phone. Um, but couldn't make a video. There was barely any signal there whatsoever. We had some nice days out in um, Whitstable, uh, Canterbury, and just other places around Kent. Good couple of days, recharged, and then back to work tomorrow. But, you know, 1-0 against Man City. Like, who'd have thunk it? I mean, I was a little bit nervous going into the game. And based on the way the game started, didn't fill me with much more confidence. Like, Man City come flying out the traps. Obviously, the day before... You know, you had Chelsea, Liverpool and Manchester United really laying down a marker of their signal of intent for the season ahead. So Man City had to come out as champions with a point to prove and they sure did in that first spell of the game. But obviously we got back into it as the game, you know, went on and luckily towards the end of the game, we didn't really wane too much. We carried on playing at a decent level. So let's just run through the lineups. Um, Lloris in goal. Um Tanganga at right back that was probably the the surprise for me um because there was talk obviously that there was a possibility he would go out on loan but he's obviously had his discussions with Nuno um and Nuno said look you're very much in my plans I mean at the moment he is anyway let's not forget the window's still open the Tomiyasu deal could still happen and that could affect Tanganga in some capacity um but certainly preferred over Doherty at the moment um Aurier not even in the squad at all and then centre-back partnership of Sanchez and Dyer, Reguilón at left-back, and then Hoybier and Skippy next to each other in the deeper midfield roles. The only surprise there was that Hoybier played, played on the right of the two. He normally plays on the left. But considering on you know our right-hand side, which is Man City's left, they had Raheem Sterling and Jack Grealish out there. That's the biggest threat. Give Tanganga a bit of cover there, a bit of support from somebody really experienced in the Premier League and internationally, such as Hoybier. Takes a bit of pressure off of Skippy, who, you know, was was pretty good nonetheless against such a formidable opponent. And then further forward, you've got uh, Lucas Moura, Bergwijn and Deli Alley, and then Sonny through the middle. But all of those four interchangeable throughout the game. All of them comfortable out wide, apart from really Deli Alley, but he has played out wide before. So, yeah, that's that. And then on the bench, we had unused subs. It was Winksy, uh, Hill was on the bench, Musa Sissoko, um, I'm sure that was just to make up numbers, uh, Galini, Ben Davies, Dane Scarlett. Then the substitutes that were used, we had Matt Doherty. He came on to replace Tanganga in the 83rd minute. Romero just came on for his little appearance. He came on on the 90th minute and he replaced Hoybier. And Gio Lo Celso, he made it onto the pitch on 77 minutes uh, to replace Steven Bergwijn. So the assist was Steven Bergwijn, but really Sonny did all the work for that. That was a 55th minute goal, you know, early-ish in the second half, which left us a lot of time to hang on to that lead. Um, but we did. A team that normally crumbles towards the end of the game, we did well. But we kept that up against Manchester City. They, they haven't won in four at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium now in all competitions. Sonny's con continued his goal-scoring run against them every time they've come to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Bergwijn gets an assist, which is good for his confidence, although he probably should have put one away um, later in the game. And you know, But I've got no gripes, really. Bergwijn worked hard, did well. Uh, Manchester City, their lineup: Edison in goal. Um, along the back, Cancelo, uh, Ruben Diaz, uh, Ake, Mendy. Uh, midfield, Gundogan, Fernandinho, Grealish, Mares, and then Torres and Sterling basically playing with no striker again. Like they did for last season, they won the championship. The championship. They won the title of the Premiership 
without really playing with a recognised striker. The near bench, Walker Stones, Jesus Sinchenko, uh, Stefan Laporte, Rodri, Kevin De Bruyne came on, and Silva. I mean, De Bruyne did sort of make a difference. They definitely missed him. Um, and, you know, they had some bigger players out. You know, they missed Walker and Stones and Laporte. So, look, it wasn't the best Man City side, but however, neither is this Tottenham side. Look, we need to remember there was no Harry Kane for a start. Skippy hasn't really played much in the Premier League at all. We were playing without a recognised striker like they were. I mean, the back four, Tanganga hasn't really played much. I mean, he's had a good pre-season, but Premier League last season wasn't really used too much. He obviously had the injury towards the back end of the season. Uh, Skippy obviously had his injury. Uh, Hoybier is back in um, without really having much of a break, if I'm honest. Uh, you know, Ali wasn't really used at all last season. So, you know, we were a pretty weak inside as well. Uh, but none, nonetheless, we got the job done, didn't we? We did indeed. Um, look, my takeaways from the game, Tanganga was absolutely fantastic. From a technical sp standpoint, was it his best game? No, there was times when he played the ball out uh, into touch. He ran it into touch a few times, but he was up against Grealish and Sterling and they were really pushing down that side because they obviously saw that he was probably the weak spot in the team. But no, he wasn't. If they'd have used some common sense, they'd have attacked down the other side a lot more because Reguilon likes to get forward more, tends to leave him a bit exposed, although he can recover with his pace. His defending at times is a little bit iffy, shall we say? So that probably would have been their best bet to overload that side and maybe push Grealish over that way to support Mares. However, they didn't. Chose to go with Tanganga and the guy was an absolute warrior. He, he just bled for the badge. Um, and it's nice to see a guy that's come through the academy. He's young, very respectful young man, speaks well. Um, I mean, I've always enjoyed listening to him talk. He, he talks with passion about the club. And it's just great for us to see um, that someone like him coming through the club. And I mean, when he was subbed, he came off because he was he was on the far side and had to walk all the way round past the fans to a standing ovation. It was it was a really really nice moment to see. Um, Hugo Lloris didn't really have much to do throughout the game until De Bruyne come on and whipped that shot across, which um, I actually thought Lloris dealt with really well. He pushed it uh, really far out to out to the left. He got really strong palms onto that. So you know impressed with that that he didn't have much to do throughout the game but kept his concentration. Um, but I actually thought as well, uh, Sanchez and Dyer, they didn't do too bad. And it's one of them, like, if, if you remember the cup final last season, you know, we as a team didn't play our best. However, the defensive line were really strong and shone. So, I mean, although consistently Dyer and Sanchez, they just aren't good enough for Tottenham. They seem to come out in some of these bigger games and perform to a really high level. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of impressed in that way. And further forward, I thought that Bergwijn offered a lot more uh, running about. Um, Sonny wasn't as active as I thought he was going to be, but I, I feel that's probably because he was playing through the centre and we know that that's not Sonny's best position whatsoever. Like, I'm never really a fan of him in there. Um, but at the moment, we haven't really got anyone else that can play there. So I can kind of understand it, but I expected him to have a... Not his most productive afternoon, shall we say. Um, but I just feel like we just seem to do well against City. I don't know what the reason is behind it. But, you know, City have now lost their last four visits at the Tottenham Hotspur, Hot, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium in all competitions. And that's the first time Guardiola has lost four such away games in a row in his managerial career. So that's that's a big feat, really. Um if we look at the player ratings that they were given, um, and this was a Sky Sports one, so the players on a seven was Lloris, Sanchez, Dyer, Reguilon. Oh, page is reloading. Brilliant. We'll just wait for that to do its thing, shall we? Mm -hmm. Yep, reloaded. Uh, yeah, so Lloris, Sanchez, Dyer, Reguilon, Hoybier, uh, Ali, and then... They gave Tanganga an 8, Mora an 8, Bergvine an 8, and Sonny an 8. And Skippy only got a 6, which I think was a bit harsh, really. Um, 
it wasn't his most productive game, not going to lie, but I felt like he, he offered enough and they gave man of the match to Jaffet Tanganga, which I'm pretty sure everyone won because he was incredible. Um, okay, so the fans, it, it was it was quite interesting to hear the whole stadium singing, are you watching Harry Kane? You know, he wasn't present in the stadium whatsoever. I'm not surprised. Um don't really blame him for not being there because there would have been a mixture. There would have been abuse. Um, and seeing as the fans were singing, are oh, you watching Harry Kane without definitely knowing he, whether he was in the stadium or not, you know, probably isn't going to go down well in this little ongoing battle that we've got at the moment where he feels like the fans have been a bit harsh, but, um, you know, we seem to do all right without Harry Kane. I'm not going to lie. Like, I've said this a few times when Harry Kane's had like big injuries and stuff and uh, pundits always sit there and say that we will struggle without Harry Kane. But other players have always pitched in with goals in the past. I remember like Ericsson, um, Sonny, Mora, they all tend to chip in with goals. Their their goal amounts seem to go up when, when Kane's not there of, other than, you know, when Harry Kane's linking up with his main man, Sonny, and previously Ali. But certainly the rest of the players tend to step up and, and get more goals. Um but, you know, it wasn't it wasn't too worrying apart from the opening part. I, I felt like we applied ourselves in a fairly good way. I felt like Nuno set us up well. We absorbed the pressure well um, in the opening 15 minutes or so when City were really, really pressing us. Uh, but all round, I was I was just impressed with the team spirit. The shape um, was very good. Um, Nuno was very much involved talking to the players throughout the game. Um, everybody seemed to be together, have each other's backs. It was nice to see. Look, was it the prettiest um, win that, we, that we're going to get this season? No, it wasn't. But it was probably the most difficult game we could have had first game up because Man City, whether they put their first 11 out, second 11, or even beyond that, they're still a decent team that would finish high up in the Premier League even if they lost, um, lost quite a few players. So, you know, it, let's just look at some stats, okay? So, possession-wise... They actually had 65.6% percent percent possession throughout the game. But there were times where we actually dominated. I remember in the, um, was it late on in the first half? There was a spell where we had like 70-something possession over a five-minute period. Like we took them out of the game for a bit. They just couldn't get the ball off of us. Um, I mean, they come out on top for a lot of them, Manchester City. They actually won more duels. Uh, not by a lot, it was 56%. Uh, aerial duels they won 57 percent uh we actually made 10 interceptions which is great they only made three so that shows that our reading of the game was better from a defensive um perspective offsides we have th had three they had one and that's probably due to you know the pace of our players just not anticipating being a bit too eager corners we had three they had a whopping 11 corners in the game which just goes to show you the the amount of defending that we actually did uh, because Hugo certainly didn't have a lot of saves to make. So that's a lot of, you know, defensive players getting in the way, making their blocks um, like they should do. But if we if we talk about what Nuno actually said after the game, he said, it was good, I think. The atmosphere was special uh, off the hard work of the boys. They make any crowd proud when they work so hard. It was strong. We were lucky because they had chances, but the boys held on and they stayed in the game. Um we knew it would be tough. After the first 20 minutes, we did better and we started getting our chances. In the first half, we didn't finish so good. When we should have shot on goal, we didn't do it. Uh, not only him, and now he's talking about Jaffet Tanganga, in terms of shape and our organisation from the front three, worked very hard and edged, uh, worked very hard and closed the gaps. It's very difficult to play against City with the way they build uh, the first moment. It requires a lot of di discipline, so the boys did okay. I'm sure that with commitment and the talent we have, we will be a good team. We are in a process of that. I am learning every day and I'm very proud of them today. Very proud. Um, you know, and then he was obviously speaking about Harry Kane, um, which we're not going to talk about. Um, Guardiola had saying, general, we arrived in the final third many times, but not clinical enough. Well, that's probably because you didn't put your striker on early enough. Uh, Jesus. You know, what have you got against him? I don't know. He's a striker. Just have a bit of faith of him and he might come good. Um, which is obviously why they're after Harry Kane. Had he been on the pitch, probably would have buried a load of those chances. Um, 
we are more or less the same team from last season, but we're missing some people. I, Kevin De Bruyne didn't play from the start, um, and he hasn't completed a full session for them. Um, they've lost three games, 1-0, so have to do better. Uh, we tried everything to win. We have another week ahead to get players back, and hopefully they can step by step. This sometimes happens. We arrived many times in the final third, but it was the same story. We are good enough to score plenty of goals, and I'm sure we're going to do it. You've seen the stats against Tottenham. They're always quite similar. They're a good team and it's always tough. It's not easy to control the ball and Son makes very good movement on the transition. Mora makes you defend deeper, but we lost simple balls. Two days ago, we were together as blah, 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 blah. Then a bit about Jack Grealish. Um, you know, the players out there say Sonny was, was brilliant in his interview talking about how much they've missed the fans and how much they they made a difference in the game. He seemed very happy. Um Man of the match, obviously, Jaffet Tanganga. That he just seemed really happy at the end, just with the, the reaction that he got from the fans. It's really special for a kid like him coming through the academy. Um, you know, he's now ahead of Aurier and Doherty, which is fantastic. Uh, let's have a look at his um, stats for the game. He had 49 touches, um, 18 out of his 20 passes were completed. He won 11 duels, two clearances, five times he gained possession. Uh, one blocked shot. That's his 14th Premier League start. Um, he's now played in two home wins with clean sheets versus Man City. So, yeah, all round, not too bad. Um, am I overly excited by this? Not not particularly. It was a great day, nonetheless, as a Spurs fan. Um, great for all the guys back in the stadium. Um how are we going to fare this season? We shall see how it all pans out. Obviously, teams have still got time to strengthen because the window's still open. We will probably be after people as well. Um, just on the Harry Kane thing, City are <laughs> are looking at the possibility of signing Dusan Vlahovic, who we've been heavily linked with for a while now. So I'm assuming that's their backup option if they can't get Harry Kane in. Um, but we go again now. So Harry Kane hasn't actually travelled with the squad to play Pacos de Ferreira in the Euro Europa European Europa Conference League. So he's not travelled with the squad. Um probably a sensible move. One, because we still don't know what's going on with him in terms of transfer. And two, it gives him more time to get his fitness back. And then three, it's a chance for some of those other players to get a chance and shine. And I would probably assume that if he does not play against Wolves, then he's probably out the door. That's what I would assume. Um, but we shall see. Nuno's spoke about it and said that, you know, they'll they'll review where he is. Um, they'll, they'll obviously be training on Saturday before that game and that decisions will be made then as to who's going to play. Barring any injuries picked up either on Thursday or in Saturday's training. Um, I'd assume we might see a couple of youngsters. Like Niall John is somebody that has definitely made the trip. Whether he gets on the pitch or not, who knows? But he played a lot in pre-season. It'll be interesting to see who he does go with. Um Bearing in mind we have got the game at the weekend against Wolves. He may rest a few players. Um, I'm assuming he will. It may be a good opportunity to see someone like Romero or Hill. I, I will hope Hill will certainly get some minutes. I don't know about Romero because he may end up starting the game against Wolves. Um, bearing in mind he obviously made the bench for the game against City and did come on for all of like two or three minutes. Um, so his fitness is obviously getting there. Hill is a young fit lad anyway, so I'd assume that He's pretty much raring to go. He's just played a competition. Probably doesn't need too much of a break. And he's not going to be starting every game anyway. So it's not like his legs are going to go. So we'll see what happens. I'm expecting us to win that game. Um, that's tomorrow night. Uh, so make sure you watch it, obviously. Um, not the most exciting competition, but it is a good opportunity to see some of the lads who we might not normally see. So that'll be an interesting one. Um, but that's pretty much it. Yeah, so apologies that this one's up late. Um but, you know, we all need a break every now and again. I wanted to get away and with my new job, I've, it's, it's been kind of hard to to get holiday dates over the line because obviously I changed jobs during the six weeks holidays, which is never a good idea. But, you know, nonetheless, that's what it is. Um, thanks for sticking around, guys. Um, enjoy the rest of the week. Hopefully we get that win over the line tomorrow. See some good, strong performances from players that are going to be pushing to break into that Premier League squad. Um, be interesting one to see who actually starts at the back for us. I wonder, I wonder.
I mean, Carter Vickers, who I've spoken about several times, you're probably sick of it now. Um, I think we've told Newcastle that he's going to cost £5 million. Um, whether they'll pay that or not, I don't know. But I think that's a fair price for a guy that, you know, he's still young. He's done well in the championship on loan the last few seasons. Uh, so we'll see how that one goes. Um, what else transfer-wise? Look, we're just linked with loads of people again, so there's no point in going through that right now. We'll just see how it pans out now, I think, rather than discussing players. So once Hill has made his debut, you'll get that video talking all about him. So yeah, hopefully we get some wins over the line, get some answers on some of those players going out the door and certainly get another few in the door because we definitely need them. Gunslinger, I will let you know, I think we are going to go with Mike the Cat and we're going to spell it M-I-K-E like you said. It just kind of makes sense. It's a bit cheesy. I don't, I don't want to go of anything too clever on that one. So yeah, we're going to go with Mike the Cat for the dead cat. Um, yeah, so if you haven't done so already, guys, please subscribe to the channel and show your support. It's definitely growing at a great rate. Really happy with that. Um, but your support definitely helps it go in. Um, so yeah, enjoy your weekend. Take care, guys. And as always, come on you Spurs.